Morning and welcome to We're Burning Daylight. I pray that this morning finds you well. We're believing that the Lord has already set before us footprints that you and I can follow throughout this week. He does say in the word that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by him. So I pray that this morning we seek after righteousness as the gospel of Matthew declares and that we follow in those steps and we are where the Lord needs us to be every day of this week. And I'm so thankful that you chose at this very moment to be with us as we read God's word together and we declare his word through devotion, encouraging and building up one another so that our faith, when tested, will be strong, a strong foundation of faith, and then let us spill over into other people as we encounter them so that we might be an influence for the kingdom of God. I'm going to read out of the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 11. It says, cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven or even to eight and you know not what disaster may happen on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of the woman with child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. If, so if a man lives many years, let him rejoice in them all. But let him remember that the days of darkness will be many, and all that comes is vanity. Rejoice, young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Remove vexation from your heart and put, it, put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. We move over into the last book of the entire Word of God, that of the Revelation. Chapter 22, we're going to pick up our reading right here in verse 6. It's, he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Let me declare that sentence one more time. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of this prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer see, still do evil, and the filthy still do fi be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city at by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. And the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, 
of this prophecy. God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Amen. Today, our title devotion is No More Curse. Jesus is coming soon. There's an old song that we used to sing uh, around the altars here at the church. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. If this is true 2,000 years ago, Revelation 22, 12, it is more true now. The day that Jesus returns will live not in infamy, but in eternity. For from that day on, there will be no more curse. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, what wonder. On that day, I will no longer struggle with sin. On that day, the virus embedded within humanity will not only be defeated, it will be completely eliminated. On that day, people will no longer be at war with themselves. No wonder the spirit, bride, and he who hears say, come, come, verse 17. The longing for freedom and perfect rest can only be satisfied when Jesus comes back. Personal sin may be overcome when the believer is promoted to the presence of Jesus. But communal sin continues as long as humanity inhabits earth and space. All creation groans together, including the ransomed and redeemed. For the final liberation of all things from the curse of sin and death. Amen. The joy in heaven over each and every sinner who repents indicates the anticipation. The protracted longing for the spirit or of the spirit and the saints for the final eradication of sin and death. Heavenly beings are not ignorant. Nor does our awakening in glory remove our awareness of God's ambitions. Heaven itself is not fully at rest until the redemption of all things. Pilgrims plotting on earth and pilgrims in the celestial city join with the angels and the Godhead, yearning for that great and glorious day when the trumpet will sound and the Lord will descend and all will finally be well with our souls. Oh, hallelujah. I am reminded of these hymns that we grew up on and how each one of them were just mentioned right here. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the Lord shall return to catch his saints, his, his bride away in glory. Hallelujah. And it is well with my soul for eternity. Amen. The sin, curse of sin is the issue. Therefore, the issue of sin must remain the priority of both the church and missions until the day Jesus returns. Here's the priority here. Church and missions have different roles as they work together for a common goal. The mandate of missions is the priceless vision of planting the church where it does not exist. The call of the church is to attack sin wherever it is found and to magnify Jesus in every sphere of life as a fully orbed witness to the coming kingdom. The mission, sodality, has one last laser-like mandate. The church modality has a holistic commission. Both church and missions lose their way if they lose, come on, if they lose their focus on attacking sin. Sin is the universal and timeless malady. Jesus came to save sinners. The temporal energies and resources of the church and missions must be concentrated on evangelism and discipleship until the great day when Jesus comes and initiates a sinless eternity. Hear these words today. Amen. All the cosmos long to be free from the curse of sin. The best thing we can contribute toward ultimate liberation is to preach the gospel to every people on earth and then the end will come. Amen. Then Jesus will destroy the curse. Our going to share the gospel around the world is indelibly linked to Christ's coming. Let us go rapidly 
and courageously so he will come quickly and victoriously. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, but I know the responsibility and the work that I must be doing. I believe this is why the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart the title of these weekly devotional sets. We're burning daylight. We have work to do. That is what lays behind that title. This is simply we've got work to do and we must get up and get ourselves moving towards the things of God. Sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We all have a part in that. We all have nations that we need to go to. And we thank the Lord Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, the ability to speak that word boldly and courageously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Bobby. Boy, we just kicked off this week. Perfect. Amen. So be ready. The steps are there. Follow the steps. Be ready. Be willing. Be available. For Jesus wants to return and catch his bride away. Will you be diligent about the things that he has called you and I to do? Amen and amen.